and welcome to another episode of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. Today we are at the Navi Mumbai office of a global enterprise level technology solutions provider, Mastech. Mastech or Management and Software Technology is a global software company which is renowned as an enterprise application specialist. Working closely with business and IT, the company provides services in business intelligence and data warehousing, enterprise mobility, testing portals, to name a few. NSC Finviz visited the office of Mastech in Navi Mumbai with the country's finest experts to advise and educate the young employees on investments and financial planning. And we're now joined by our two very special experts. We have Harshwadan Rungta, who's a CFP and also with Rungta Securities. Welcome to the show, Harsh. And we have Hemant Ristagi, who's a CEO with Wise Invest Advisors. Welcome to the show, Hemant. And our core topic for today are the fundamentals of personal finance. Um, Hemant, first question. All right. So when a layman investor decides to, you know, start this journey of personal finance, what are some of the key two, three baby steps, the first steps that are needed to be taken to set the foundation of this important aspect of life? Well, you know, whenever I talk about personal finance, there are many fundamentals mm -hmm. to that. But I think if I have to list out one, the most important fundamental mm -hmm. of personal finance is to spend less than what you earn. Personal finance came in. It, on one hand, it talks about earning more. On the other hand, it talks about spending less. So when we talk about earning more, what is that we do? Okay, all of us are working. For example, we try to do best in terms of our career growth. And the second most important part of earning more is how do you invest your money? How can you make sure that you get the maximum within the risk defined by you and that's mm -hmm. how you can increase your income. When we talk about ex spend less, basically what it means that you have to plan your expenses, which means that you have to look at budgeting, which we generally don't do. Like as long as I'm mm -hmm. earning well, I don't really bother about how I'm spending, you know, because don't forget, it's not how much you earn, but how you spend your money is going to make you rich. So which is, which is very, very important. So when you get into budgeting, mm. then you kind of plan your expenses. You know exactly where are you spending, which are the expenses that you can cut down. Okay, and that helps you in ensuring one thing is that you have all the money that is required to achieve all the goals you may have, which you want mm. to achieve in short term, medium term and long term. So okay. I think the most important thing that we all of us need to focus to begin with is how do I spend less than what I earn. Okay. Harsh, do you add to that point? So, you know, to get to that, it's really important to plan. Or rather in personal finance, it's really important to plan. And we are all master planners. We'll plan our vacation well. We'll plan what movie or which dinner we're doing this weekend. We'll plan how we want to spend our weekend and all this. But we won't plan our personal finance. We'll plan our career. That this is the education I need. This is how I'll get a job. This is what I want to do. But we won't plan our personal finance. What is that? Why do we just like say ki ho jayega in that, but everything else we are so uh, engrossed and, you know, looking into. What's, what's your experience in this and how do you guide people to pay the due attention to personal finance planning? Well, Sumit, if you look at a situation as to if at all a person <coughs> looks at personal finance, when does he or she look at it? Mm. So, it, you know, they look at it only when there is a problem that arises. Yeah. So, uh, while everything is going good, there is no, no, you know, there is no absolute no worry about what's happening to your money. Mm. The question arises is, the moment you are in a crisis, now those crises could be because of X number of reasons. Could be, there could be a change of job, there could be loss of job, there could be a medical emergency in the family, there could be a death in the family which could lead to financial crisis. The whole idea is we start looking at for personal finance at that point in time and by then it is invariably a bit late. So what do we do? As we spoke about, uh, we heard uh, Raymond say that you need to look at your expenses. Mm. Now, if I, if you just focus on that one topic of focusing on expenses, is it, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, chapter by its own. So, if you begin, just by looking at expenses, hmm. how do I start cutting them down? Right. Okay, so the first step that you will need to do is that you need to start putting them into different baskets again. Mm -hmm. So, the first one being there are certain mandatory expenses and they are fixed in nature. There is nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. Which could be your rents, could be, could be your telephone expenses, electricity, food, clothing. So these are some basic necessities which are fixed. So you categorize them as fixed mandatory expenses. <coughs> the other element, then you have to say there are some uh, mandatory expenses but they are variable in nature. So it could be your uh, you know, mobile phone bills, you mm. could, there is a control that you have on them. Mm. Then would be certain discretionary expenses. So which is your outing, your you know, vacations, your, your movie outings and all other things, your spends on yeah. electronics. These are all your discretionary expenses. So mm. once you put them into three different categories, and you start noting down 
your expenses. After a, probably a quarter, you will start realizing where you're spending and where right. is the actual leakage in your budget. Mm -hmm. Then the budgeting process will start wherein you will start putting in two figures that this is mm -hmm. how I need to curtail, mm -hmm. this is where I can cut down. So this, in this particular exercise, you get in control of your expenses right. and then start allocating and prioritizing that you need to shift from mm -hmm. X to Y. Okay. And and then the prudence of uh, mm -hmm. you know the investment investing and for future goals will start. Okay. Himan, this question is from Sundar Subramanyam. He says, how frequently should one review one's finances and how to do it? Well, I think it's a very very important question. Uh, we talked about setting up goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, obviously, when you're talking about investing for the short term, let's say your time horizon is a year or so, you might have to do it. You know, every month, maybe every quarter. When you're investing for long term, let's say you're talking about 30 year or 35 year time horizon for retirement, essentially you end up investing a lot of money in equities. As equity we know, it tends to be volatile in medium term and short term. So reviewing it every month is not going to help you. There it could be at least you know, quarterly or maybe half yearly. Uh, there are going to be times where you will see a particular asset class or certain options in your portfolio not doing well. Don't be in a hurry to exit from there. You must understand what is the nature of the asset class that you have invested in. Okay, it is possible that, for example, if you're investing in some mutual fund, even the best of mutual fund may underperform for a year or so. Mm. Don't be in a hurry. What you need to know is how do you measure your performance? Because that is the basis on which you decide whether, you know, I should be exiting from that or not. So every investment has a benchmark. Every investment has a peer group. See how it has done vis-a-vis -vis that before, you know, kind of rushing to exit from there. So I think how frequently you do it, it clearly depends on what is the overall time horizon that All you right. have? Like I said, long term, you still have time to go through those phases of volatility. Short term, you don't have because you have a definite time horizon now for year two where you need money. And that's why we said at the beginning, don't take too much risk investing for the short term. On that note, it's time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. When we talk about gold, uh, it's a, it should be a part of everyone's portfolio in a certain amount of percentage, but uh, there's no more need to actually buy a physical gold and have that gold coin or a gold uh, bar just for the sake of investment. We can get electronic gold, e-gold. There are ETFs that work with gold. Could you uh, tell us a little bit more about these uh, options, these avenues to invest in, uh, in gold for a person's personal finance portfolio? Well, uh as we, as we know, gold most certainly needs to be a part of one's portfolio. Mm. You need to allocate some portion of it. You do not need to have a large component. Mm. So we're talking about investing about 10% of your portfolio into gold. The question arises, in what form do I hold that gold? So you mm. have a choice. One, the traditional method, you go and buy gold coins from a jeweler. We're not talking about uh, this 10% excludes the jewelry that you already have. So <laughs> ladies are free to... I, I see worried faces. Yeah. So. <laughs> So we are already more than 10%. So the jewelry is excluded out of this 10%. So this 10% is purely from your financial investment purpose. What do I mean by this is that you don't hesitate to even sell it off at one point in time. Now, there, is, there are other options. What is your underlying objective? Your underlying objective is to benefit out of the price increase of gold. Now you can do that by not physically holding that gold in your own hand. So there are gold funds which are available. Now this is, this is again a fund which is offered by a mutual fund, so you just go, like you do your SIPs, you can buy and invest into gold funds, so your, uh, your NAV will be linked to uh, basically the, the changes of gold prices. The other method to invest is if you have a DMAT account and you have a, you know, account with your stock broker, you can also buy gold ETFs, these are exchange traded funds. So just like how you buy shares, you could be buying these gold uh, ETFs from the exchange and they would be credited in a DMAT account. The advantage is they are paper and they are they are not in physical mode. They are in nature of paper, so you do not have any worry about storing them. Mm -hmm. You do not worry about uh, you know it getting stolen or purity issues. So they lie in your in your DMAT account or in in the mutual fund account. And uh, as in when you want to sell, you just go about redeeming them if it's in a fund form or it is on ETF. So you go and sell it off on the exchange. So you get those benefits of gold investing in gold without actually holding them in your hand. 
this is a far more superior option mm -hmm. in case you do not have that kind of liking of uh, physical touch and feel for gold. So right. if that is not the case, then this is a far superior method of investing into gold as an asset. When we say uh, term plan, so if we select any term plan, then how can we uh, how can we calculate about the sum insured? What should be the ideal sum insured for us? So broadly speaking, it should be 10 times of your gross income, but that's the thumb rule. Thumb rule may or may not apply to you all the time. So what you can also look at is that if you have taken a loan, for example, okay, if you've taken, let's say, 50 lakh rupees loan, which has to be repaid, you must ensure that apart from your gross income, you've also taken care of the loan that you have to pay. So it clearly depends on what is your financial situation at this point in time. If there is no loan, like I said, you can maybe go with, with the thumb rule that I mentioned. Otherwise, make sure that any liabilities that you have. Okay, now for example, another way could be that we talked about different goals for children education or, or you know, some other goal which we need to achieve over a period of time. Now, I can maybe, you know, commute all that and, make sure, and ensure that everything is covered in that term plan. Okay, so there are different methods of doing it. And if you find it cumbersome, like I said, then you can go with the uh, thumb rule. You're watching NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18, season 3. It's time for a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18, Season 3. Today we're at the Navi Mumbai office of Mastec. Himant, we've spoken a lot about personal finance, but there's an important part, which is insurance. And I mean both life insurance and medical insurance. Uh, very often companies provide their employees with a, a health cover. But do they require a separate health cover? That's part one. And secondly, life insurance. Do they require life insurance? See, when we talk about insurance, basically we're talking about risk management. You know, we did talk about you know, planning your investment, planning your finances. Now, we, we talked about def defining your goals and start investing for that. Mm -hmm. Now, for that, if I'm, my time horizon is 35 years, I need to survive for 35 years. Okay, there's no guarantee I may survive for 55 years, I may not survive for the next 10 years. The goals that I have, whatever I want to achieve with the money, that will remain whether I'm there or not there. So you don't want basically that the people who are financially dependent on you to face any financial hardship if you're not around. So how do you ensure that? So therefore, the first priority has to be, before you even begin your investment process, has to be insurance. Okay, now there are two types of insurance that we talked about. One is the life insurance. Clearly, it's a risk to your life that you cover. Uh, we have seen invariably investors buying those traditional plans, whether it's ULIP or whether it's an endowment plan or, right, a whole life plan. Now, these plans typically, except maybe ULIPs, typically pay you 6 to 7% return. Now, we talked about that with that kind of return, you may get some tax benefit, but you will struggle to beat inflation. Many a times we look for convenience. Okay, why look for investment? Why look for insurance? Let's buy something, put it all together, and done with it. So, you know, we are happy about it. That is not the right way. When you talk about insurance, you should be looking at pure risk cover. That's where the term plan is very, very important. Because what these traditional plans do, for example, your requirement may be to have a life insurance cover of one crore. Let's talk about a thumb rule here. If your income is, let's say, 10 lakh, you need 10 times of your gross income, 1 crore. If you look at the total in insurance that you have through traditional plans, maybe 15 lakh, 20 lakh. Now, that is obviously not enough. Plus, you are paying huge amount of premium there. So, it's very, very important to look at pure risk products, which is a term plan. They're not only cheaper, but they ensure that whatever kind of, you know, uh, risk that you need to cover, you're able to do that. It's equally important to look at health insurance. Okay, now that's something that when we are young, we said nothing is going to happen to me. Why we bother about this? Why pay so much premium? You know, with that I can buy a smartphone. Why unnecessarily worry about this? But the fact is that we don't know what is in store for us. And also don't forget that even if the employer has given, sometimes it makes sense to have your own health insurance. The reason being that if you change your job or anything can happen in, in life, during that period you're not covered. So it's equally important to look at insurance for both life and health it's equally important to choose the right product. We talked about term plan for life insurance, and if, if you're a young family, okay, then you can look at a family floater plan for health insurance. If you have elders in the family, make sure they're not a part of the floater plan, you can buy individual plans for them. So buy 
insurance definitely to in fact begin with that and make sure that you have the right products there are some platforms of some you know uh, companies that i have heard of which provide you the ability to link your accounts and you know manage your performances but if you could throw some more light on this area as to how to get an overall picture of all your investments in one shot mm. uh, that i think that will make life easier for a lot of us okay you get into something it's very easy we talk about reviewing so how do you review if you don't have the access to the data so you know there are couple of third party vendors if i may say now if you talk about uh, moneycontrol.com for instance you would have an, a facility where you can create your own login id and you can put in your all your data and you get real time updates on to how that particular fund or your investments are performing the other method is that you approach an advisor an advisor and you know you the, the collating of data you will have to keep and then advisor can sit with you and talk about what is going right and wrong with your investment so that's the review part what your question is more about the collating of data so collating of data is pretty has to be automated i mean you cannot do it manually because if it's an sip you can't every month put in an excel sheet with the navs so you would have to rely on certain automated platforms you know such as money control is what i told you one there are others if you wish to you know explore online or you maintain it yourself and then the review part the interpretation of that development has to be done by a professional like in any other field i don't have much credit or neither i have taken loan and when you said that whenever i will go in future to take a loan then it will show negative because i have been always taught that taking credit cards and all is not good okay so what do i do if i go for a home loan or something like that then my civil score will show negative so on that case what shall i do because i don't have not much credit I don't use credit card so much. Well, if you don't have any credit, you won't have a score. It won't show negative. Okay. Okay. So how will a bank judge whether what kind of, you know, uh, borrower you are? Okay. Okay. Whether you manage your finances well, whether you believe in paying, uh, you know, installments on time. So you know, one of the ways you can do that is you can change your perception about using credit card. Use credit card. It's not a bad thing after all. If you use it very very effectively, you know, it's uh, very very convenient when you're you know going out somewhere. You don't have to carry cash. as long as you can control your expenses right if you use it for some time you will start creating a credit history for for yourself okay it generally becomes very difficult if you don't have a credit history but i'm not saying necessarily that it will always become a negative for you that you don't have it if you're dealing with a bank for example for the last 10 years the bank knows what kind of you know investor you are what depositor you are right whether your your income is regular okay how how much money are you taking out what are you spending because sometime if you are investing through your own bank the bank would know what kind of investor you are but it always helps if you have a credit history so you you need to look to maybe create one how you could do that i can suggest that bait you have utility bills which you can pay using credit cards in fact you also get a discount if you pay it online so you could start by you have a credit card you start mm-hmm. paying your utility bills because that you in any case you are paying those bills mm. so you have electricity telephone mobile phones if you register and pay through credit cards you also get a discount Well, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Harsh. Thank you so much, Hemant. Thank you so much for having us here. This is the right time to have this kind of a show at our office. And uh, now, like, was absolutely confused about investing money and what should be the right option. So the 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 session itself, in which the session itself is an eye opener. and uh, we, i got to know from the session it's not like last minute rush for doing valid investments but it should be pre planned and with a very nice organized way it should go for the entire year into part and pieces this show format was very excellent